Let go of rain It's not your song to sing no more Goodbye blame Weights can't lift you up But you can find a way to drop them Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I'm running a little bit late, I'm at Tarn House in the Lake District, which is a place that I used to walk all the time when I was little. And I've not come and photographed this for, I don't know, 10 years. So I thought I'd come here, spend four or five hours here. It's just around sunrise, but there's not gonna be a fantastic sunrise, so I'm not too bothered about that. But the clouds are amazing. And I'm first in the car park, apart from the cows. So you can just see Tarn House here on my, on my, on your right. And the reason it's a good spot here is that you get a really good view across Tarn House. And I may not even have Tarn House in my shot to the Langdale Peaks in the background, which you've seen in my shots so many times. But we'll just get into that time when the ferns are starting to turn that brown color. And hope, what I'm hoping is to get a few splashes of color on the fells and it should look amazing. So you do it how it all begins Then comes reason and purpose well, You will find your way In the meantime Oh, that was hard Made it to where I want to be So You can see Behind me The Langdale Peaks But I'm shooting over Tom Heights Which is this first hill here So I've got a bit of a a little bit of mid-ground interest, but the view all around here is pretty good. <laughs> looks really nice. So I'm actually quite excited about this and the weather looks changeable, so that's good. So I'm gonna stick it out here for a bit. So first thing is, put my long lens on. So I'm gonna stick on my, my new, woo, um, 70 to 200 if we can get the lens cap off. All right, back to the wind. And stick that on. There we go. So what I'm hoping to do, I'm just gonna hand hold some shots to begin with and I'm gonna see what I can get. Now I don't really need to worry about depth of field and um, so yeah I should be good around about f5.6 something like that. Fantastic. So I'm shooting at around about 100, 120 millimeters and I want to just get the bottom of these trees in and then the Langdale Pikes in the background. That looks fantastic. This lens is amazing. You can hand hold at like a twentieth of a second and it's pin sharp. long lens what I'm trying to do is just pick out details in the landscape so you can see over here that the um, we've got some light rays over there and there's just quite a nice again top of these ferns and then there's quite a nice sort of graduation so I'm just gonna make sure I'm focused I've got back button focus so then I just don't need to worry about focus at all and you can see I just show you what I can see then I'm just zooming in to about there. 
and I've got that shot. Now, I, don't, I think the clouds are a bit untidy. There's not a, ha a fantastic graduation, but it makes a nice, simple shot. But there's lots of nice um, compositions when you look with a long lens. So if I look over here, there's a really nice one sort of there with a nice diagonal, the trees at the bottom, and then, yeah, the, the, the cloud at the top. So if we get some sunlight over there, that'd be good. And hopefully we'll get, I mean, the light over there looks amazing now. Gotta get a bit higher, just to change that foreground a little bit. So I'm just trying to find a composition with, with this tree here. Um, it's just got some nice light on at the moment. I think it may be better. See, this one's pretty good too. I could just do with the light. The light's shooting directly into it and I, I need a bit more side light really. So, now this might be quite good from here, actually. Oh, that is quite good. Yeah, that's quite good from here. So I think I'm gonna come down here with my camera and shoot that. I can hand hold, it's light enough. There's not a huge amount of depth of field required. So I'm gonna grab my camera, 24 to 70, go down there, see if I can get some snaps. Okay, so, it might, it might seem a bit strange that I'm shooting with the sun sort of over there and at the moment there's no light on it, but when the light just catches just the edges of the tree, it looks really good. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a portrait and I might not even include the whole tree in because what I like is not all the green grass on the left-hand side because I think that's distracting, but just these two trees and just how the curve of the tree goes. So, so basically what I'm trying to do is just shoot Just that tree there. It may work, it may not. It's interesting. It's definitely worth an experiment. I'm not sure how good it is. This light in this direction is amazing, but there's just not a great view in this direction. I want just some of, just I just want the sun just to poke through a little bit and just give a little bit of light to these trees. Um, and then maybe the mountains in the background. But over there, and that's the best way to shoot really, shooting into the sun and towards the sun. Um, which I sort of knew when I came here. It's one of those days that Oh, just so frustrating. Ah. I say something that Photography is definitely a game of patience. It never comes easy. So I've been up and down and tried to find different compositions whilst I was waiting. And I just sat here for about 45 minutes, just hoping that I get some light just on the fells in front of me. And then finally some light just came across. You can just see maybe on the peaks, there's just a little bit of it there as well. And um, what I meant was I could get some shots with the 70-200. I have to say, 
that I love this lens. <laughs> it, it makes such a big difference. The VR combined with the in-body stabilization, it's incredible. All these shots are handheld and I was going down to a 20th of a second. I'll probably get back to Lightroom and regret it, but they look really good. But if I just think about this and you know, I've been out now for three hours and then look at last night when I was out for four hours and I didn't really get anything. Um, most of my, most of my stuff, most of my time out doesn't get logged. Nobody sees it. It's just me failing a lot really. And it, I know I've said this so many times before, but it isn't easy. <laughs> you know, I, I, and I'm sure lots of other YouTubers and other photographers show you the best work, you know, the very best work, those photos that just happen to work. You know, nobody in Instagram shares all their rubbish photos, the ones where they hiked and they've got nothing. But, oh wow, the, the, the light's amazing now. Just let me go and get this. So I'm just shooting towards um, Grasmere here. I've got it on six, f6.3, focused on the... Oh, that's so nice. Just need to move that way just a little bit. This is amazing now. It's all worth the wait. You can see Helm's Crag in the background, so yeah. I think I'll probably just wait just a few more minutes and back to the van. So as you can see, I'm back home now. And I, I have to admit, after that shoot on, on the top of the hill there, shooting on the day, I was, I was a little bit disappointed and I just didn't feel like I'd made the most of it. As, as well, the evening before, I'd gone out to shoot a, a, a sort of video that I'd been planning for a long time and it didn't work out. I'd spent four hours recording all the footage. Um, and then I just gave up because I just didn't feel it, it really was gonna work and I'm gonna to have to rethink that and redo it. Um, so I was a little bit deflated, uh, but when I got back and looked at the photos, especially the photos that I'd taken, which were predominantly with, with my 70 to 200 lens, which were all handheld, by the way, um, I was really pleased. So I just wanted to show you two of them and talk a little bit more about them and, and why I like them. So, I'll get straight into it. So first of all, there's this one here. So this was shot at, um, I think it was around about 200 millimeters, but I put the exact focal length up and the details up, probably around about a 40th of a second. And it is pin sharp. I mean, all my shots were pin sharp. I, w I was amazed and it was quite windy and I'm not the best at hand holding, if, if I'm honest. But this works really well. There was a few different combinations with light in different areas, but I like this one where the light was just on this sort of central bit here. Um, and then, you know, this was in shadow. And I just think this sort of soft tone in the background works really well because this was not lit at all. In fact, all the time I was there, there was no sun came on the mountains in the background. Um, but I, re I really like this. This little rock just here that you can see, um, this is called the Lion and the Lamb. It's part of Helm Crag. I'll, I'll show you just another photo I took on top of that mountain there of that of that little feature. But it, yeah, this works really well. I'm glad that I spotted it when I was talking to camera just just at the end there. And um, so this was printed on my Canon Pro 1000 on, and it's on photo speed, NST, bright wire. I always get questions about that, so I thought I'd probably mention it as well. Actually, I always get questions about my music as well. So all my music I get from Epidemic Sound, and if you're interested, then they're a fantastic way of getting music for your YouTube videos or any videos that you make, and there's a link in the description below. Okay, so this was the other one, which was shot about 90 degrees to that, and, um, 
yeah, I'm I'm just over the moon with it. I just think it looks fantastic. It was just a real fleeting moment where the light came and then just disappeared again. Again, it was something where you do want to be able to handhold your, your camera because, you know, these fleeting moments, you can't set up a tripod and just point at an area of landscape because you've got to be able to move and react to the light really quickly. So being able to handhold makes such a big difference. Um, but you can see the detail in this is just incredible. Um, but yeah, again, it's just capturing the light on, on the landscape and just waiting for it just to appear on certain bits of the landscape, but not all of the, of the landscape. And I think that works really, really well. And I've just got a little bit of cloud over this peak in the distance there. Um, it took a little bit of editing this just to get the color combination, the color tones right, because the sky and the background, because I was shooting really early, was quite blue, yet the light was quite warm. So I've got quite a, a tricky combination of that blue light and the warm light combined. And if you don't edit it quite right, it can look a bit odd. But yeah, I was really pleased with both these shots. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be going back to this location as well. Um, just above on the south shore of Ton House, you can shoot long shots um, there all the time. I, 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 it, it's just fantastic. So thanks ever so much for watching and if you've liked this video then give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed then consider subscribing below. I'd like to know what your comments are, you know, do you shoot handheld with your long lens very much um, and you know, what, what, what do you shoot? You know, comment below, I'll, I'll check them out and you know, we can get a bit of discussion going below. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye. It's how we learn. It has to hurt, it has to hurt Every single turn Don't beg your pardon You're not someone's victim It has to hurt It has to hurt